Hello, my name is Commander Leo Murphy, United States Navy retired, and I would like to welcome you to this documentary entitled Wings Over Pensacola, The History of Naval Aviation in Pensacola. This is where we begin. I am standing at the original flying beach cleared by the naval aviators when they arrived here in January 1914. How they came to bring their fragile hydroaeroplanes in flying boats spans a millennia. On May 11, 2011, the U.S. Navy commemorated the 100th anniversary of naval aviation, spanning the generations between a simple Curtis Pusher land plane modified for waterborne use to a modern McDonnell Douglas FA-18 Hornet capable of flight faster than the speed of sound. As part of that celebration, thousands of current and former Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard aviators who wear or have worn Navy wings of gold flock to Pensacola to celebrate the centennial of naval aviation in conjunction with the Naval Aviation Museum Foundation Symposium. Most of these visitors did not realize that 97 of naval aviation's first 100 years have been spent in Pensacola, longer than any other naval air station in the world. During this nearly century of flight in Pensacola, prospective naval aviators flew from 10 major air stations, a seaplane base, and countless outlying landing fields in Florida and Alabama. Unlike unearthing Pensacola's early history, all aviation artifacts are above ground and still exist. You can literally visit dozens of abandoned and currently active Navy airfields in the local area to uncover naval aviation's past in Pensacola, only if you know what you are looking for. The runways, towers, hangars, and ramps of these former landing fields and seaplane bases are quiet now. Silent sentinels to the frenzied flying activities that once took place in the skies above them. But at one time, they were fully operational naval air stations, echoing with the footsteps of nervous flying cadets, self-assured instructors, and the deafening roars of the piston engines of training aircraft, as the Pensacola Naval Air Training Center produced thousands of naval aviators for overseas combat duty in the service of their country. Today, only faint shadows of their former glory Many of these fields and their facilities often sit abandoned or unrecognized, unknown for their contributions or their original purpose. In celebration of the centennial of naval aviation, Cox Communications is proud to present Wings Over Pensacola, the history of naval aviation in Pensacola, as we revisit the forgotten evidence of nearly 100 years of naval aviation in Pensacola, Florida. The dream of flight is an indeed an ancient dream. From the first time men and women glanced enviously upward to watch the gracefulness of birds, flight has always served as an inspiration for would-be aviators. But through the millennia, humanity's dream of flying proved to be an elusive goal. We often forget that so little was known about aerodynamics that it has only been a little more than a century since the first true airplane flew. The folklore of virtually every early civilization has legends of flying gods. Ancient Greek mythology holds that Daedalus, imprisoned on the island of Crete by King Manus, fabricated wings for himself and his young son Icarus by rotting feathers together which he secured with thread and wax. During their escape, however, Icarus flew too close to the sun, which melted the wax and he plunged into the sea. In 1010, a monk in England attached artificial wings to his body and jumped from the top of his abbey, only to be seriously injured. Other tower jumpers, known as daring or demented souls who launched themselves from high places equipped with magical spells, homemade wings, or hopeful combinations of both, also tried to fly, but without much success. In 1299, Marco Polo observed Chinese sailors attached to kites as observers. The Chinese had invented kites about 3,000 years before Marco's visit, but kites were treated just as curiosities, not recognized for developing lift, 
although they do. In the 15th century, Leonardo da Vinci seriously studied flight and created numerous flying machine designs, including plans for Ornithopter, which is a machine that flies by imitating the flapping motions of birds. His works were lost, however, and his designs had little influence on the development of flight. In 1783, the Montgolfier brothers invented the hot air balloon, here depicted tugging on its mooring lines moments before being released untethered near Paris with human passengers aboard. But a balloon is not a true flying machine. Its destination is controlled merely by the vagaries of the wind. In the 18th century, Sir George Cayley invented the cambered airfoil and built and flew several gliders, a revolutionary departure from the flapping wings of his predecessors. He is the first person to resolve the four forces of flight, lift, drag, weight, and thrust, but lack of a lightweight engine stalled his progress. In Germany in the late 1800s, Otto Lilienthal became the world's glider king, making over a thousand flights before dying in a gliding accident. What was his last words? Sacrifices must be made. In the United States, Samuel Pierpont Langley, director of the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., successfully flew several steam-powered, unpiloted flying machines before admirers in the Washington, D.C. area. This caught the attention of then Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Theodore Roosevelt, who recommended that the U.S. Navy assign two officers to examine the potential of this flying machine. Langley's experiments also caught the attention of the U.S. Army, who awarded him $50,000, which would be more than a million dollars today, to build full-scale models of his flying machines. Unfortunately, both of his attempts at manned flight from a houseboat anchored in the Potomac ended in failure. Langley's dream of flight sunk like his flying machines, and the U.S. government refused to fund any more experiments, believing that heavier-than-air flight was impossible. During this same period, however, two bicycle makers by the name of Wilbur and Orville Wright were having much better success. Unknown to almost everyone, they methodically solved the problems of aircraft control, design, and propulsion in their workshops in Dayton, Ohio, and on the windy sand dunes of Kildelville Hills in North Carolina. On December 17, 1903, only nine days after the Langley's last flight attempt, they made the first manned, powered, controlled, sustained, and heavier than air flight in history. Lasting less than 12 seconds, the dream of flight had been realized.